Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the gay white Christmas musical, Holiday Inn. Starring George Murphy, Martha Tilton, Jerome Cowan, and your host, Gordon McRae. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tonight, it is our particular pleasure to bring you Paramount Pictures' delightful musical Holiday Inn with its great score by Mr. Irving Berlin. As the lovely leading lady of the piece, you will hear Miss Martha Tilton. Mr. Jerome Cowan appears as the agent Danny, who handles the careers of Ted Hanover and Jim Hardy, played respectively by Mr. George Murphy and myself. And so for the next 45 minutes, come with us and have a happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Looking back, I see that each of the moments I treasure and remember was a melody. Because for each moment there was a song, and for each song there is now a memory. Happy Holiday takes me back to the beginning. One year ago, Christmas time. I was working in a florist shop, and all of a sudden the door opened, and Ted Hanover walked in. He was whistling. Oh, was I surprised. The most famous dancer on Broadway doesn't walk into a shop every day. I just stood there with my mouth open. Uh, excuse me. Do you usually go around like that, or are you waiting for someone to throw in a fish? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Mr. Hanover. I just never expected to see you. Oh, you know who I am. Oh, yes. I know who you are, all right. Well, I'd like some orchids, the finest in the house. A corsage? No, no. I want a dozen, so she can pin them any place she wants. Oh, <laughs> all right. Oh, you know that song, huh? We're using that in our act. Well, I only know the beginning. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. While the merry bells keep ringing, may your every wish come true. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. May the calendar keep ringing happy holidays to you. If you're burdened down with trouble, if your nerves are wearing thin, pack your load down the road, come to Holiday Inn. If you're laid up with the breakdown, throw away your vitamin. Don't get worse, grab your nurse, come to Holiday Inn. Happy Holiday Happy holiday, may the calendar keep ringing. Happy holiday to you. Holiday Inn, that's a wonderful sound. It's too bad there isn't any such place. Ah, but there is, way out in the wilds of Connecticut. You see, my partner, Jim Hardy, just bought it. That's why he wrote that song. It's going to be open just over each holiday, and he's going to have a big floor show that ties in with that season. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Why, sure it is, sure it is, if you have an affinity for the carrot and the field mouse. Personally, I loathe the country. Say, uh, how about the orchid? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Hanover. I'll have them wrapped in just a minute here. Um, Mr. Hanover... As long as you're in the shop and you have such a kind face. Now, look, young lady, look. I'm getting married tomorrow. The lady is waiting. And at the moment, she's engaged to my partner, and we have to explain things to him so he'll understand, you see. 
And we also have a show to do in an hour, so please make with the package if you well, don't mind. Well, I am, but I can talk while I'm rapping. You see, this is really just a part-time job. Oh. Actually, I sing and dance. Mr. Hanover, I want... I know, I know. You studied dancing since you were a little child. You spent long, weary hours in every theatrical agency on Broadway, but just now I have to get back to the club and get on... How did you know all those things about me? My dear, that's the story of every star and would-be star on Broadway. Forget it, kid. Marry the florist and raise little orchids. (laughs) Then you won't get your heart broken. Well, okay. Here's your package. At $36. Special rate because you bought by the dozen. Oh, thank you. Here. You may keep the change. Say, if you really want a job... Why don't you take a run up to Connecticut and see Jim Hardy? Our act's folding tonight, and he'll be up there tomorrow. Thanks, Mr. Hanover. Thank you very much. Oh, don't mention it. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. I didn't realize then how much that song would come to mean to me. The next day, I invested a little money in a train ticket and went up to Connecticut and knocked on the door of Holiday Inn. Jim opened the door. Well, hello. Santa Claus is a day early this year, I see. Come in, come in. Mr. Hardy? Yeah. Here, let me help you off with those things. Oh, thank you. It was a cold ride up from the station. I'm Linda Mason, Mr. Hardy. Well, I'm glad to know you, Linda. Uh, I, uh, I happened to run into Ted Hanover, and he suggested I come to see you about maybe getting a job in the show. Uh, you dropped the wrong name, lady. Ted Hanover's about as popular around here as measles. Oh, well, you can't blame a girl for trying. You see, I work in a florist shop, and yesterday Mr. Hanover walked in and asked for a dozen orchids. Yeah, and today the girl that I was going to marry yesterday is wearing them. Oh, that beautiful Lila. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right, all right, I'll get over it. I'd rather she made him unhappy than me. Well, when are you going to open the inn? New Year's Eve. Did that wolf in tap shoes tell you the idea of the inn? You see, I've written some special music for each holiday. Why, no, I had no idea you were a composer, too. Well, I I had hoped to get the inn open tonight. I'd written a special song for the occasion, but I I just couldn't make it by Christmas. Oh, I'd love to hear the song. You would? Well, fortunately, I happen to have a piano handy. I, uh, I live for moments like this. I'm dreaming of a one. Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen to hear Sleigh bells in the snow card I write May your days be merry and bright And may all your Christmases be warm That's a beautiful song. You like it? Well, come on, sing it with me. like just like the ones I used to know mm-hmm. where the treetops glisten where the treetops glisten and children listen and children listen to hear to hear
Hello, Linda. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Would it be all right at this early date if I said Merry Christmas? Well, it is rushing the season, but it sounds beautiful. You know, I like your voice. Maybe... Oh, pardon me a moment, Linda. Hello. Oh, hello, Jim. This is Ted. Goodbye, Ted. No, 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 Jim, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't hang up on me. You don't know what I've been through. Nothing trivial, I hope. Jim, look, I want to read you a wire that just came. You remember Lila, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, I remember Lila. Well, the wire's from her. I was supposed to meet her at the license bureau at City Hall, but she sent a Western Union boy in her place. Well, congratulations. I hope you two will be very, very happy. <laughs> Jim, look, don't choke. This is the wire. She says, sorry, darling, but flying to Texas tonight to marry the most wonderful millionaire in the world. Hope you find a new partner soon. Love, Lila. Well, that's life. No, that's Lila. <laughs> Jim. Jim, look, I'm coming to Holiday Inn. See, I'm going to help you open the place up. Now, we'll get it open fine by New Year's Eve. We'll put on a big show. Now, now, take it easy. No, no thanks, Ted. I've already got my show lined up. Oh, but Jim... So I'm... long, Ted. I'm sorry, Linda. That was just a fellow who got the wrong number. Uh, Linda, would you like to open here with me on New Year's Eve? Oh, thank you. You know I'd love to. Maybe there is a Santa Claus after all. Well, uh, could it be me? Well, Ted Hanover did send me here. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing. It's the first good turn he's ever done me. Oh, it's going to be such fun to be a part of Holiday Inn. You're right. Because if you're burdened down with trouble, if your nerves are wearing thin, pack your load la, down la, the road, come, come to Holiday, Holiday Inn. Inn. Happy Holiday! Happy Holiday! Happy Holiday! Happy Holiday! May the calendar keep ringing. Happy Holiday! Well, here we are starting on that last week just before Christmas, a week that's likely to get pretty frantic for a lot of us. There's that shopping that hasn't been done yet, and the gift wrapping, and the last-minute Christmas mailing, if you didn't follow the good sound rule of mailing early. And then there's a lot of decorating and a lot of preparing for Christmas dinner and, oh, a dozen or two other things that have to be done. Yes, it takes a lot of planning, as well as a lot of doing to get ready for Christmas. It started weeks, even months ago. The producers began to turn out their materials, the manufacturers to make their goods, the merchants to stock their shelves. And all through that process, you'd find railroads doing their indispensable part, bringing the raw materials together at the place of manufacture, hauling the fuel and bringing in the food and the other supplies needed to keep the work going, distributing the product, delivering the goods all over this land. Now, during all these weeks and months, you might not have been on a train you probably didn't go into a railroad freight house. But just the same, the railroads were working for you, all to the end that so far as transportation is concerned, you might lack nothing which could help to make this a Merry Christmas. <laughs> and now back to Holiday Inn, starring George Murphy, Martha Tilton, Jerome Cowan... And your host, Gordon McRae. Happy Holiday! Happy Holiday! Yes, for each moment there was a song. And for each song there is now a memory. On New Year's Eve, Holiday Inn was jammed with people. After the first floor show, Jim and I went out in the kitchen and helped dish salads onto plates. I remember looking at Jim and thinking, this really is the beginning of a new year in my life. Any for those thoughts? Oh, well, I was just thinking. It's almost the new year. Yeah, those old hands are practically straight up, aren't they? One minute to midnight, one minute to go. One minute to say goodbye before we say hello. Let's start the new year right. Twelve o'clock tonight when they dim the light. Let's begin kissing the old year out. Kissing the new year in. 
Let's watch the old year die with a fond goodbye and our hopes as high as a car. How can I love go Hey, that sounds like it. Come on, let's get out on that dance floor. All right. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Hello, hello, Jim, old pal, old friend, old fan of my neck. Hey, Ted, what are you doing out here at Holiday Inn? Happy New Year. Hiya, baby, hiya. Good evening, Mr. Hanover. Now, look, Ted, you're, you're a little the worse for alcohol. Uh, How about going upstairs and lying down? Oh, no, no, I don't want to go upstairs. Come on, little girl. Come on. How about a little dance with old Ted Hanover, huh? No, no. Come on, Linda. It's all right, Jim. I don't mind. Oh, uh, listen to that music. Just listen and get with it. Oh, that's a baby. That's a baby. Just glide it. Just glide it. Hey, there's Ted Hanover and his new partner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim. He's okay, Linda. I'll take care of him. Whether he's sober or not, I never dance with anyone like that. Hey, that's a great finish to that number, Hanover. Yeah, it's a great finish to a lot of things. Happy holiday, happy holiday. Oh, no, 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 not that. Who's making that awful noise? I am, Ted. It's me, your agent, Danny. Oh. Open your eyes and look at me. Oh, no, no, I'm afraid to. It might make me ill. <laughs> Danny, what do you want? Ten percent of this headache? I don't need it. I got one of my own. I was with you last night. Oh. Well, 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 well. Is Junior coming, too? Oh, hello, Jim. Jim, where did you get that extra head? Oh, I... I always wear it in case one goes out on me. Oh. Oh, Danny... Danny, boy, where am I? At Holiday Inn. Well, where are you? Who, me? I'm at Holiday Inn, too. <laughs> uh, Jim? Me, too. I'm right here with the rest of you. Huh. It's crowded, isn't it? Hey, uh, uh, how did I get here? Well, I'll tell you a long story. Last night was New Year's Eve. Oh, yes. Now it comes back to me. Now I remember. You know, that's too oh. bad about Lila, but mm -hmm. on the whole, I think you're better off doing a single. Oh, no, no, boy. Boy, I got to have a partner. Well, aren't you tired of getting partners and falling in love with them and losing them? Mm -hmm. I don't know why you didn't tell me you had a new girl on the leash. Uh, a new girl? Yeah, the one you were dancing with last night. She was terrific. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was, was I dancing last night? Why, you got the best hand of your life. No kidding. I couldn't get close enough to see the girl's face, but her figure... <laughs> <clears throat> yeah... You didn't get close, though. No, no. The closest I was was when she was leaving the dance floor. I, I only saw her then from the back. Uh -huh. She was uh, about this. I mean, she she has a... Well, if I ever saw her from the back again, I'd recognize her. <laughs> you saw her, Jim. You describe her. Who? Who, me? Well, uh, I wasn't watching very closely. She was medium, medium-built sort of girl with a medium face. She had an evening gown on with a, with a medium kind of belt in the back. <laughs> Just a medium girl. Yeah, she built like a former girlfriend of mine named Consuela Schlepkiss. <laughs> yeah, that Consuela was all right. Used to play the pinball machine a lot down at the corner drugstore. Why, I remember one time she was high man three weeks in a row. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's dandy. Thanks. Help a that helps a lot. Oh, I'm happy to help you out any time, Danny. I'll do as much. I want to tell you something, boys. She'll be back. A chance meeting in the night. Destiny drawing two pairs of feet together. No woman could pass up a chance like... She'll be back next holiday, and I'll be here waiting. Oh, you, uh, you will, huh? Yes, I will, huh? Okay. It's your time. Waste it. I'll see you later. Hello, Jim. Well, I've got my overnight case packed. All ready to go back to the city in the florist shop. Uh, Linda, I I've been thinking about that Lincoln's birthday number. I've decided we better do it in blackface. Blackface? Mm-hmm. You and I, the chorus, and everyone in blackface. I 
I went back to New York. A whole lot of things all mixed up in my mind. The excitement of dancing with Ted Hanover and the excitement of singing with Jim. And most of all, the excitement of just being around Jim. I could hardly wait for Lincoln's birthday, but at last it came, and once more I was with Jim on the stage of Holiday Inn, in blackface. <laughs> Tiny baby boy was born, Abraham, Abraham. When he growed up, this tiny babe, the folks all called him Honest Abe. Abraham, oh Abraham. In 1860, he became the 16th president. Now he's in the Hall of Fame, the most respected gem. That is why we celebrate this blessed February date, Abraham, Abraham. The country's going to the dogs to shout it loud and long. Then from a cabin made of logs, the right man came along. The USA is united thanks to one whose name was Nancy Hanks. What's his name? Abraham. Abraham, he gave this friend the finest son who ever went to Washington. Abraham, Abraham, oh Abraham, Abraham. When someone told him General Grant was drinking every night, he answered, "Go see if you can't get all my generals tied." That's why we celebrate this blessed February. That was Lincoln's birthday, Jim and me in blackface. And let me tell you, even with charcoal all over his kisser, he was something to start a girl dreaming. I couldn't wait to get back to the inn on St. Valentine's Day. And I was there early in a brand new dress, wearing my heart on my sleeve. Hey, you really look like something dreamed up for the occasion. Oh, thank you. Oh, the inn looks beautiful. You like those cupids? I uh, pose for them myself. <laughs> I thought they looked familiar. Come over to the piano. I, I've got a valentine for you. What is it? Well, you just stand there by the piano and listen. This is for you, for me, honey. I mean every word. Be careful. It's my heart. It's not my watch you're holding. It's my heart. Oh, Jim. It's not the note I sent you. That you quickly burn. It's not the book I lend you, but you never return. So remember, it's my heart, the heart with which so willingly I part. yours to take, to keep or break, but please, before you start, be careful.
not my watch you're holding, it's my heart. How in the world did you get out here again? Now just keep playing, Beethoven, just keep playing. Come on, baby, let's finish that dance we started New Year's Eve. You know, I've been hunting for you ever since New Year's Eve. You have? Well, I've been right here. You have? Jim? Jim? Okay, okay. Two of you finally got together. And I'm sure neither one of you need me anymore. Jim. Oh, Jim, don't be such a churro. <laughs> Whatever that is. Don't pay any attention to him. He's just jealous because I always take his girls away from him. Now, can I help it if he isn't attractive to women? I can't believe Jim would act like that. Say, say, wait a minute. Where have I seen you before? I mean, before New Year's. I sold you some orchids. Of course. You're the girl in the flower shop. Well, well, it's a small world, isn't it, huh? Well, come on. We'd better start practicing. Because you and I are going to dance together tonight. Tonight and every night from now on. <laughs> moment things changed between Jim and me. Oh, we went on doing shows together at Holiday Inn, but from that day I was dancing with Ted, not singing with Jim. The holidays were far from happy then. Easter was a bust. May Day was dark and rainy. And June, the month of brides, was completely grim. And then came the 4th of July. Ted kept asking me to start out on the road with him with our numbers, but I didn't want to leave Holiday Inn. Finally, I decided to ask Jim what was wrong. Wrong? What could be wrong? Everything's just dandy. Look, you, you better get in your costume. It's almost time for your number. Something's wrong, and I want to know what it is. Well, look, once I was in love with a girl. We were planning to get married, and all of a sudden a big change set in. She decided Ted was what she wanted, and that was that. And once is enough for that to happen to me, I'm, I'm not sticking my fingers in the fire anymore. Do you think I'm like that? Well, I, I haven't noticed any indications of you being any different. Well, I'm very happy to know what you think of me. Now, listen, kid. This is a big night in your life. Danny has one of the biggest directors in Hollywood in the audience. And you and Ted are practically on your way west right now. Well, maybe they, they won't like us. Oh, they'll like you. You're great, together or separately. And when they see that ballroom number and that 4th of July solo of Ted's, all you have to do is make your reservations on the Super Chief and... By the way, that's all right with me, too. Well, okay, that's all right with me, too. The show that night was sensational. It closed with Ted doing his solo, and the way it went over should have impressed even the toughest Hollywood director. Hey, that was really great, Ted. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Ted, you were sensational. You too, Linda. Thanks, Danny. Folks, I want you to meet Hollywood's greatest picture director, Mr. Howard Dunbar. Howdy Mason. Oh, hello. Hanover, it's nice to meet you. And Mr. Dunbar, this is the greatest dance team in the business. Hanover and Mason. Yeah, that really was a show. Oh, uh, oh, this is the owner of Hollywood in uh, Jim Hardy. Say, Jim, is there some place that's quiet where Mr. Dunbar and I can discuss business? Well, you can go right over there in my office. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, Danny, it's Mr. Hardy I'd really like to talk to. Hey, Jim has a great voice, hasn't he, Mr. Dunbar? Well, uh, his voice is fine, all right. But it's the idea of Holiday Inn that interests me. I think there's a picture in it. And we could do a story around two guys and a girl and use all the special songs you've written, Mr. Hardy. Hey, that's a sensational idea. Well, now, Mr. Dunbar, of course, uh, considering the originality of the idea, we've got to get a pretty good price. Now, wait a minute, Danny. Don't let your 10% run away with you. And thanks for the offer, Mr. Dunbar, but I'm not interested in selling. Not interested? Mm. Jim, are you out of your mind? It's the heat, Mr. Dunbar. The heat. He hasn't been himself all day. The ideas are natural for pictures, Jim. Well, of course, we'd star Mr. Hanover and his partner in the picture. I'm not interested in selling. Well, that's up to you. Well, now, wait a minute, Jim. Wait a minute. Don't be in such Jim, a hurry. Jim, be to... decent for once in your life and let somebody else around here have a chance? You had to louse this up for me, too, didn't you, Ted? Hmm? Whether it's a girl or an idea or a song or even a, a new hat, as soon as I get it, you want it. And you usually get it, too, don't you? Oh, now, Jim, Jim, you're my best friend. Yeah, yeah, I always have been. But you always seem to wind up my worst enemy. Well, okay, you've wrecked everything now, anyhow. Take the idea, take the music, take Linda, take the whole darn thing. And both of you do me a favor, will you? And stay away from me from now on. Okay, Mr. Sorehead, if that's the way you wish it. 
Well, uh, Mr. Hardy, we'll want you in Hollywood, too, to write the music. No, thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll write the music here and send it to you. Jim, if you'd only listen to what me... What do you I... want now, Linda? Should I throw in my shirt, too? Happy holidays! There's the next show! Happy holidays! Yeah, happy holiday, And many of them. Earlier this evening, we were talking about the planning and preparation which goes into making the Christmas season what it is. For a lot of us, one of the high spots of that season will be a trip, for Christmas is the traditional reunion season of the year. It's the time when all members of the family gather happily together in one home, enjoying to the full the warm, friendly spirit of Yuletide. That's why weeks and months ago, railroads began to plan and prepare for the increased travel which Christmas brings. It was necessary first to figure ahead as closely as possible how many of you would travel and where and when. The next step was to line up the extra cars and the extra trains that will be needed. And that means also lining up the extra people that will be needed to run them and making the necessary arrangements in busy terminals to get the trains in and out promptly and to take care of the crowds. Many of these things can be planned ahead on the basis of experience and expectation. But then there comes along sometimes the unexpected. Weather, for example, a storm, snow, fog, icy roads would mean that a good many of you who plan to travel some other way might change your minds when the time comes to go and decide to go in the warmth and comfort and safety of the train. And if that should happen, the railroads will do their best to take care of you too. So the railroads are making ready to carry you and your family on your Christmas journeys. And they hope that many of you will ride with them. But no matter how you go, they wish you a safe journey and a joyous reunion at Journey's End. The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. to Act Three of Holiday Inn, starring George Murphy, Martha Tilton, Jerome Cowan, and your host, Gordon McRae. The heart with which so willingly I part It's yours to take to keep but please, before you start, be careful. to Hollywood, and Jim stayed at Holiday Inn. I was lonely in rooms crowded with people. I was impatient with voices that dripped with compliments. I was heartsick and completely without heart. Nothing mattered very much. Linda, you know, we're getting to be quite an item in the gossip column. Are we, Ted? I bet we are. How about giving them something really concrete to write about, like, say, a wedding date? I'm not in love with you, Ted. But I'm in love with you. You always fall in love with your dancing partners. I've never been in love like this before. Why don't you marry me and let me try to make you happy? We go so well together. We dance well, we talk well, we look well. It all goes to show you how deceiving appearances can be, doesn't it? Be careful, it's my heart. It's not my watch you're holding. It's my... Ted, Ted, stop singing that song. Oh, there's no use living in the past, Linda. The past is over. You might as well put your mind and heart in the future. I know you're right. 
I know it's the sensible thing to do. I haven't even heard a word from him. Come on, make a new life for yourself, Linda. Marry me. You really want to marry me, knowing how I feel? Yes, I'm sure that you'll get over how you feel now, Linda. Every torch burns itself out eventually. All right, Ted. All right. Christmas? Christmas? Marry me Christmas Day. All right. All right, Christmas Day. And so, Ted and I planned a wedding for Christmas Day. And back at Holiday Inn, Jim sat alone, listening to a record he had made of a Thanksgiving song. He sat by himself, talking back to the record. Okay, sing it good, Pappy, and cheer me up. I've got plenty to be thankful for. Are you kidding? I haven't got no great big yacht to sail from shore to shore. Still, I've got plenty to be thankful for. Hey, you're really loaded, Dad. I've got plenty to be thankful for. Uh, so? Like what? No private car, caviar, carpet on my floor. Nothing. Still, I've got plenty to be thankful for. Why don't you go out there and tell her you love her, you jug I've got eyes to see with. You need glasses. Ears to hear with. Big enough to fly with. Arms to hug with, lips to kiss with, someone to adore. You're a little flat. How could anybody ask for more? You're not getting anywhere sitting here. My needs are small. I buy them all at the five and ten cent store. The worst you could do is say no. I've got plenty to be thankful for. Get on a train, you chowder head. I've I've got got plenty plenty to be thankful for. On the night before Christmas, we shot the last scene of Holiday Inn. I walked on the set, and there was the inn, just as it had been on the day I walked in and asked Jim for the job. There was the Christmas tree and the piano. There was everything, just as it was. All the props were there, only the people were different. I wandered around, touching things, until the director said, All right, darling, now you come in with a sleigh, and we'll follow you on the boom from outside into the inn. And when you get there, go to the piano and do your song. You just make me cry when you sing it, and I'll get you out of here early so you can start getting ready for that wedding. Yes, Mr. Dunbar. (laughs) All right, ready for a run-through. Christmas card I write. Jim, Jim, darling, where did you come from? I came to get you and take you home to Holiday Inn. Oh, 
Jim, I thought you didn't care. I thought that... I never stopped caring. Oh, Jim, neither did I. And may all your Christmas Jim said, I'm going to marry Jim. I'm sorry, but it's the only right way for this story to end. Well, that's very nice of you to let me know. It's the only way the three of us can ever be happy together. Oh, well, I bow to the inevitable, gracefully saying the appropriate, the seasonal thing. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. May the calendar. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae giving a special thank you to George Murphy, Martha Tilton, and Jerome Cowan for guesting with us tonight. And to our splendid supporting cast, Jack Edwards and Jess Kirkpatrick. Holiday Inn was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway. Well, next week the show train will arrive on the same tracks and at the same time. On board will be Nadine Connor, Sterling Holloway, Clark Dennis, and Francis X. Bushman to join me in bringing you the Sigmund Romberg operetta, The Desert Song. And by the way, tonight we, we'd like to say welcome to a brand new show which follows us on ABC and will be heard each Monday night hereafter. It's Henry J. Taylor, the famous author and commentator in his program, Your Land and Mine. And I'm sure you're going to like it. Pull aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. <laughs> Holiday Inn was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is the Technicolor production, The Pale Face, starring Bob Hope and Jane Russell. George Murphy appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the all-star Technicolor musical Words and Music, based on the lives and music of Rogers and Hart. Gordon McRae appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one of them has its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you. Friends, this is Gordon McRae again. All of us who help to bring you the Railroad Hour join with our guest stars and the American Railroads in sincere wishes that you will have a Merry Christmas and a truly happy holiday season. Mm -hmm.